having a love it about one of his Wigan players. <laughs> Which it is. <laughs> Which it is. I just, the truth of it is, Richard, you know this absolutely for me, is I just hope that he does. I, I'm not one yeah. of these Wigan fans who get the bitter same. and twisted about and players moving to the NRL. Yeah. I, I get the situation at the moment, just as I get that we used to be able to bring the best players over. Um, yeah. We can't at the moment. We, we struggle to retain them. But all this means is Wigan are producing the best players. And if, if the NRL think Wigan are producing players, that means they're good enough for the I NRL. All I want for them yeah, to yeah. do is go and prosper yeah. rather than them come back and people question them forever. Like the like with Sam Tom, it's taken Sam Tompkins probably four years to get over the question marks about his NRL spell. Um, yeah, even though he won a grand final in that time, you know. That's, I, I want the lads to succeed over here, uh, wherever they come from. And, and like I said, back to James Graham, that really changed my mindset on it. You know, I want, yeah. I want them all to do well. Right, the, it's been a long time since an English back actually come out here and excelled. I was absolutely. thinking it was probably Gary Connolly was probably the last English back that come out here and did something. Yeah. And Jonathan Davis Welsh, obviously Brian Carney Irish, but the largest English back that actually had an impact on our comp was probably Gary Connolly, and that was in the early nineties. So yeah, yeah, before it's, that, it's it was a very long time. Obviously, a, yeah. a fire had a couple of years, didn't he, with um, yeah. or a couple of spells with Balmain, didn't he? Where probably no, a fire played for uh, uh, Ill Warren Steel. Oh, was it? Sorry, yeah, okay. And he didn't Thank quite you. have the dramatic impact that he had on, on scoring yeah. tries over here and um, I, I guess before that Schofield and Hanley yeah Hanley played really... in the centres didn't he more for, that way he was at Balmain five, five, he also played 5-8 yeah. for Balmain as well and um, and I suppose Edwards went over and uh, played a little bit of full back as well as playing half but he didn't have wasn't none of those players were bad were they but they didn't it, it never felt like their career was about playing in Australia because at the time they're earning look into the split seasons Britain. as well yeah. 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 yeah but 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 Hanley and Schofield are both Hall of Famers for, for Balmain uh, so yeah. it's yeah Andy Gregory was another one that came over and had a good yeah little, did alright did yeah. out here too yeah yeah, but you're right. It's been a very long time, so hopefully so, yeah. uh, George Williams can be a success. There's, there's another sort of weird thing about 2020 that is is new, but the move of young Ronan Michael, the Irish Huddersfield Giants player who's gone to play for the under-20s at Canberra this year. I mean, mm. you know, the Canberra Knights or the Canberra Warriors or, or whatever we want to call them, but they're bringing over all the, all the British players. Um, well... I don't know if we're qualified to answer this question, but how will that kind of move work out, Paul? Do you think? And will we see more link-ups like this? Will 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 it almost become an organised feeder structure for the Super League to the NRL? Well, I hope for the Super League, no. no. But, um, I mean, I see it happening, oh, but I've not seen enough of Ronan Michael to make any comment on how he's going to go. Um, but I mean. It, it could be beneficial for both sides too, though. You know, I mean, you get these kids that come out here in a live and breathe rugby league um, environment. It can, you know, they go back and they can take it all with them, even if it doesn't work out from over here. So, yeah. well, Jimmy, you know, Pe- Jimmy Peacock well. was Jimmy Peacock was one of those people. <laughs> yeah, and it links into what you were saying before, I suppose, Rich, as well about being like body ready to play at a higher level. I mean, if these right. kids are playing against the Australian under twenties. No offence to our competitions, but the intensity is That's higher right. at their under twenties than it is at our under eighteens or our reserve grade. So, yeah, th- there will be a chance for players who don't quite impress enough to get an NRL gig to come back as more developed players. The only thing is they won't have been playing against adults, which some of our younger yeah. players have had the opportunity to do and that's yeah. helped their development in a different way. It, it is an interesting one. Do you think it's something that will? Make play, make for better Super League players at the very least, um, Rick. Well, we've we've already had a, a taste of that, and we 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 talked about it earlier. And I think some of those lads who came out and didn't play NRL games fell into that category, and that's certainly true of the Leeds lads who I didn't talk about. So Jordan Baldwinson and Josh Tonks went out there just because there was that in England there was that transition between reserves under 21s or however it was and there's a load of lads who kind of found themselves between the, uh, the first team and in limbo and, and Baldwinson Tonks went out to the Warriors um, to kind of just to, to, to get a taste of, of of that kind of level of rugby league and 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think that if we if we look between the cracks, there's always been lads who went out and did this. I think Tyrone McCarthy did it as well. Uh, uh, the first time he did it, he went he went, and went when he was quite young, I think. Yeah, so he went and I, played at, um, up in Cairns, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. in the Q Cup. So I think there's there's, there's a history of it. Um, did it turn? It, I think Josh Chonks he has a steady away career in the Championship. I think he's in League One now. Yeah, is he? Yeah. A Baldwinson, you know, it's never really happened for him. I'm not saying it don't work, but you know, look at someone like Jamie Jamie Peacock who did it, and he, he talks about it in his book a lot that you know, sleeping on floors and playing reserve grade or you know, South Wales Cup kind of you know helped him along his way. So you know, there's something it's an in interesting it. not... one to watch develop, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, like you're saying, yeah. does it fill that gap kind of better than our reserves might yeah. between now yeah. under 18s and, and first team, right? We're going to... That's our sort of look, look ahead to 2020. We're all ho- hopeful, but not necessarily hugely optimistic about George Williams <laughs> and, 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 and Herbie Farnworth, but let's see what happens there. We're now going to move on to talk about what might come after, so the sort of rest of the decade. Luke Thompson and who else might join him? Right, Paul, Luke Thompson is the first of the next batch um, who we know are going down under. He's heading there for the 2021 season. Do we even need to discuss too much about how we all expect him to be a rip-roaring success? Yeah, he'll make it. He'll make it, no doubt. For him as well, it feels like it's, it is that motivation to be the best rather than needing a big pay, payday and things like that. You know, it's, apparently his dad's quite the entrepreneur and he, he, he doesn't want for money. Um necessarily Luke Thompson so so that was always a thing that the Saints fans hoped would keep him at home but um, <laughs> but but not to be rich oh, that's good. To add he's or... coming for the right reasons yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, and all the players who've done so well have come for those reasons haven't they to prove themselves yeah. rather than rather than to just be earning money and, and so and I yeah I, I think he's obviously somebody who wants to be the best at what he does he wants to be the best prop in the world and he's such a dynamic player in terms of his athleticism uh, I think he's going to take it by storm I think he's 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 gone to a club where they're still finding the feet in terms of climbing up the ladder they're still a team that last year they shocked some teams and, and, and got ground out some results with, with a roster that's far less impressive than a lot of the teams out there so I think he comes and he gets a jersey and I think that's important that you're not trying to you know you you go for the big deal and then you, you you're trying to push your way into a team against Aussie test props and origin props I, I think he he's gone to a club where the, the, there's the expectation is always massive but I think the, the from from their fans and and the the hierarchy of the club but I think from the outside looking in you can still see the the far up in the finished article but he's somebody who could be a catalyst to changing that and I think almost like almost like Graham was 10 years ago because after well, that sort of yeah spell where they had a young Sonny Bill yeah. and a young Jonathan Thurston and those sorts That's of things right, yeah. they, they, they went off the boil for, for a period uh, then uh, as well didn't they so it's kind of almost yeah. the same feeling as it was a decade ago when it is and my, and my point was when, when Graham came over he had to play on the bench because he still it was Des Asler was the coach and he, he played off the bench for a bit because he still wasn't a household name in Australia and as much as we know that these guys are awesome even Bateman a lot of people are like oh we didn't really know a lot about John Bateman and that and that's the media talking and the the, the other coaches and clubs are oh, we've not seen a right lot of them it's like are you crazy you know and, and yeah. that's why it's, it's here but you know it's like same for Luke Thompson I think he's going to catch him he'll catch him on the hop because not because they're so arrogant over here about but it's because the game is so elite and super league people don't look down the nose at it but it sometimes can be a bit a bit of an afterthought and um, I, I think Luke Thompson's going to come over here he's going to rip it up and I think he's really got opportunity to, to kind of catch him on the back foot as well so he'll have that way he wants to prove himself but that'll bring the best out of him but not everybody's <laughs> going to be aware of Luke Thompson is he, 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 you know there'll be people know about him but there's an expectation that you've got, got to come and prove yourself and uh, you know I think he can he can, he can not catch him cold but uh, I think he's going to you know turn a lot of heads and there's going to be a lot of media spotlight on him but for I expect him to be impressive from, from when he gets going so so 
it, when we frame the conversation about who might next week, I mean, Luke Thompson's kind of built himself into a, a different sort of breed. I mean, it, he when Holbrook arrived, almost from the minute Holbrook arrived, he went from being a, a so-so Super League player to being, you know, in the conversation for one of the best props going in the game. So, so he's built himself into that position already. But when we talk about who else might be due to go next, what one of the things that sits in my mind is John Bateman. Has has John Bateman actually managed to change the opinion of of what a Super League player could come over and do? Because he, everyone in Australia looked at him and said, "This guy's too small." Yeah. This, what what's this guy got? But when you see his his fitness, his tenacity, his um, competitiveness, alongside his skills, do you think actually that might start the the, the NRL clubs for looking at a different type of forward and not just looking for the the big guy who can deliver the big contact, but looking around and seeing some of the smaller forwards, someone like um you know the the Morgans, the Morgan Smithies and the Morgan Knowleses who are small forwards, but Incredibly, They're the names I wrote down for this conversation. <laughs> they've, they've got the same sort of um, characteristics, yeah. I think, as, as John Bateman. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Do you think the NRL will start looking at smaller players and giving them a chance? Oh, like I said, the, the the NRL in Australia, the Australian Rugby League public, we're high on um, British forwards at the moment. Um, like I said, the Bulldogs fans are so excited that Luke Thompson's coming. I've actually heard him. A lot of people. It's funny when you mentioned James Graham. A lot of people saying he's the second coming of James Graham. He's going to turn the club around. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I, I think Alex Wormsley could go there tomorrow. Yeah, and me too. He's another name on my list. Yeah. Do, do you know yeah, what? I, um, I I was having a conversation but, a, a, while, a while, not that long ago, maybe a year or so ago, with um, Chris Radlinski, who obviously leads on um, player recruitment and and those sorts of things at, at the Wigan Warriors and. And we we were actually talking about like which Super League player would you want to bring into this Wigan side right now, and the conversation was is it Luke Thompson or is it Alex Wormsley? And, and what he said about Alex Wormsley is, is so big, and he runs so hard and so fast. Will his body stand up if you gave him a three or four year contract? And so for Alex Wormsley, it almost and that made sense to, to me. It's almost like a now or never. But the way he played against the the roosters in that uh, well he was yeah. the best forward on the pitch against some of the best oh, yeah. forwards in the world wasn't he yeah. so yeah. surely if the if if the if if they must be lining up to try and get him mustn't they paul yeah definitely uh, but as as for smaller forwards i mean bikes injury prone and um, concussion so i'm a big fan of stevie ward yeah um, we, we were all desperate it, for him to not not be crossed yeah. all the time aren't we yeah uh, stevie ward uh, Ben Curry is another one I think could come out here tomorrow and make it, you know. Um, and they're, they're not your big boppers, you know, by any stretch. Um, but, yeah, they're two of the smaller, smallish kind of forwards. I think they could really well – not, you know, that was small, but, you know, they, they could come and Yeah, Curry's a, a tall no. lad, but he's not, he's not like – what you mean is, is he's not like a, a David Fafita runs at someone and two, yeah, yeah. two people fall over, when it, you know, when he knocks uh, everyone uh, out of the way and – Skittles and all that is is a line runner, isn't he? He's like Whitehead. He's like Ellis was. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I said, I know some very um very smart rugby league people out here. They 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 really rate him. Um, obviously the two Morgans, Morgan Smithies, Morgan Knowles, I'm very high on them. I think they could you know come out here as well. No no dramas. And um, the other one, you know, Jake Connor. I I still think he he's got that niggle that bit of arsehole in him that I think <laughs> makes an NRL player I just think to get him at the right club maybe like a Roosters or a Storm he, he can't go he can't go to a Storm yeah he's yeah. got to go if he, if he went to play for Bellamy that is the that is the call man. Yeah. I, I'd not even oh. thought of that no but yeah you put, you're right it's genius if you, if you put if you put him, if he went to play for the Storm for Bellamy, my God, that be, I've got goosebumps. There's no, co- there's no coach able. in the world of rugby league, is there? Probably, um, yeah. Who could bring out your most aggravating qualities in the most beneficial okay. to your performance way? The Bellamy, That's is right. You're right. It's what like Darth Vader and the Emperor, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what a shout, it's, Paul! It is. That no, is absolutely top looking, class. Yeah. That. Yeah, he's um. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, he's got all the talent in the world. I do think yeah. if he did come to the NRL, he'd be a centre, though. Yeah. I don't see him as an NRL yeah. player. 
Not many yeah, people see it as a Super League fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, so that's a, that's an interesting one because you bring up a a, a back. Uh, 